Hello and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. I am Alicia, your host, and today I'm doing something that I... Have I done this before? Have I interviewed anyone before? I don't I know don't why know. I'm asking you. I don't know. You haven't interviewed me. <laughs> I've never interviewed you before. So I have a very special guest. This is my piano teacher from childhood. Her name is Christine Beer. And how many years have you been teaching? Like 25? 31. Okay. Well, I was in the ballpark. Yeah. So Christine is, I'll, t I'll let her tell you about herself a little bit, but I just want to say that when I was growing up as a kid, what I really liked about Christine's style, you can probably already tell, she's not like the stereotypical, like cranky old lady piano teacher. <laughs> <laughs> she was more like the cool aunt piano teacher, Aww. if I could describe you like that. She always had like fun hair, a very vibrant personality, and she didn't force me into doing like lots of very like regimented piano work like you know the Hannon and classical stuff we did a lot of pop music and a lot of arranging so in her classes we would learn how to do things like create intros and endings for songs or um, add like different left hand arrangements and things like that and I, I think that was really valuable in developing my ear as a piano player so I really enjoyed our lessons together. Oh I'm so glad <laughs> I really enjoy our lessons too and I I think that's part of it for me is if I'm not having fun, then you probably aren't either. That's totally fair. Why be cranky in class? Because then you're just yeah, going to have a bad day, right? <laughs> so Christine, um, the first question I want to ask you is just for you to kind of tell everyone a little bit about yourself. What's your, why are you a piano teacher? Oh boy. And we did kind of touch on this already when we were chatting. A but. little bit, yeah. Uh, well, I was an ear player. So I was like four and I had a xylophone. And my mom says that I was figuring out songs on my xylophone. I was doing Elvis pieces and <laughs> do, a bunch of... Do, do, do. <laughs> yeah, right? I was doing Heart and Soul oh, okay. and I was doing, you know, a few other things. Um, and um, they said, hey you should go in lessons. So they, my grandpa had a friend, Mrs. Hood. Um, I don't even know what her first name was. She was just Mrs. Hood. And I went to her for two years. And she, I used like the Lila Fletcher books and the oh, yeah, Step by Step school. books. Yeah. And she tried to teach me to play um, sight reading and stuff. And I hated it. And I, I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of joyful memories like I remember like you know it was whatever like I was playing piano but I don't remember like having a whole lot of fun right and then Mrs. Hood said to my mom send her to the Academy of Music they'll let her take pop and she must have known Sharon Dykesman somehow and that's where I took piano lessons yeah so and so she sent me there and I got a teacher who made me go all the way back to the beginning and start all over again probably because my sight reading <laughs> was dead because I just wanted to do everything by ear. Yeah. And then I got this teacher that, you know, for part of the year we would do classical and then for part of the year I could do my pop stuff. And I learned how to arrange, I learned how to, you know, take chords and change them and do intros and endings and whatever. And then when I was 14, Sharon Dykesman, the owner, asked me to teach if I wanted to train. You were 14? Just when for like a summer? 14. Well, it, I don't think it meant that I was going to be teaching right away. It yeah. was going to be like a couple years long, mm -hmm. right? Oops. I was working on my grade 8, get my grade 8, finish my theory, um, and then I could have a few students, right? <laughs> Junior students. Yeah. And I went home and I was like, I, I don't know anything. I'm an ear player. I don't even know half of the stuff I'm sight mm -hmm. reading. I could have my teacher play for me and then I would just figure it out and that's how I would learn most of my stuff. And that was when I really felt that I needed to learn how to sight read. Yeah. Because if I'm going to be responsible for showing people how to do stuff, I better make sure that I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Right? And, you know, as you you teach as well, so there are some things you kind of do flying by the seat of your pants. Oh, yes. But lots of, lots of sight reading. Right? But even reading. just that, but even just, like, teaching different things, right? You know, you teach something your normal way, and you have a student goes, I don't get it. That's true. And you're like, you don't get it. Oh, well, um, okay, let's try a yeah. different approach. Yeah. Right? And then we had the techniques program in Merv Mothy, and he would come and give us all these workshops. And they were they were invaluable, right? Like, I learned so much. Well, in the techniques program, um, because I learned from these books, they they were made in Saskatchewan, right? Like No, the, in Canada, though. Oh, Canada? Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it was basically... 
all kinds of pop songs, new and old. Um, Mostly old. <laughs> but yeah, like 60s, 50s, 40s, like that kind of stuff. Yep. But it would basically be almost like a lead sheet where you'd have the melody written out and then yep. chords. And it was all learning how to arrange based on that. Yeah, how to do chord regressions, yeah. how to do like all like chord substitutions. And and then you would have different levels. And so like in mm-hmm. the first level, you'd go from a 1 to a 1, 7 to a 4. And then the next level, then you would do, you know, substituting the 4... Instead of going F F minor C, you go F B flat nine, right? That to is, C. That is far fancier than what I remember <laughs> how to do. Oh yeah, but like it was so great, and we would get these workshops a couple times a year. Okay. And sometimes they were interprovincial, and we'd have lots of teachers get together from three different provinces, and oh, it was everybody bouncing ideas off each other. Mm-hmm. It was, it, we were. It was a very very fortunate time. Like it was so great to be learning from everybody and having everybody else having different ways of doing things too well and it sounds like all of this has kind of created your um, your own like hybrid approach because when I took lessons with Christine and I know you still teach like this it's pop and classical kind of like you said I kind of feel like you got your you know your vegetables and then you got your <laughs> dessert right okay so classical music is the vegetables <laughs> that's your musical broccoli mostly <laughs> But really valuable as like a player um, from a technical level to be able to learn classical music. And you know, it could be because that's how I learned. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think it's so great to have different approaches and to see, you know, because the classical is what came first. Yeah. And then how, you know, what we do today, where all this came from. Yeah, that's true. Right? And then also, like sometimes I have students that we just do pop, do pop, do pop, and then they get to a certain age, you know, they hit 12, 13, going, I have a friend who has a grade four. Yeah. What grade do I have? It's like, well, (laughs) we don't have a grade. We're just playing. It's like, well, can I do a grade? Are you interested in classical music? Well, maybe. Let's yeah. try some. So then we'd find one that would kind of fit. So then we'd be working on a sonatine. He's like, hey, see this Alberti bass pattern? Do, 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 yeah. do, do. That's what we did in this song. This is where it came from. Right. Like, well, I know how to do that. Right? So instead of taking your classical piece and just playing exactly the notes on the page, it's like, oh, well, what if we break this down into chord progressions? So now you've got a C chord, and now you've got an F chord, and now you've got, here's your 5 to 1 pattern, and now you've got... Yes, well, classical and, music is especially, like, it's all 1s, 4s, and 5s. Of most When you break it down. Right? Yeah. And then, so, if you can have a jumping off point, oh, this is like this, and this is like this. Yeah, and make, like, a modern comparison. Right, and then it's easier to memorize, too, because if you're memorizing a chord pattern... Right. That's comprehension. Because if you can look at the page and be like, oh, okay, Beethoven's using like an F major chord and a C major chord. Yeah, that it'll make it stick in your brain. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I want you to tell the people who are watching this video, if you have any, um, I don't know, memorable anecdotes of me as a student. Hmm. Well, you were always a very hard worker. Was I loved our pieces that we did. And, you know, interesting, you were more interested in the classical than yes, the pop. But I sometimes we would take the classical and do a pop approach, right? Like mm-hmm. when we learned Barbara Seville and we changed some of the left hand around right yes. or doing yanni which is contemporary classical mm-hmm. right and but again doing like because he's you know like the one five eight king you know and so yeah doing, doing different variations with your one five eights and you know it's not always one five eight one right but yeah. doing different kinds of things patterned like um and so just doing different kinds of music like that it was yeah, so would you, is um, Barbara Seville, and I also learned Marching Season with her as well. These were pieces that we would learn to like a perfection level because they were for a music festival. Mm-hmm. Um, so would those be like your most memorable pieces that we worked on together? Because I think I they was, are for me. Yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. Definitely. Well, and then the other thing that was memorable for me was when you came to lessons with your pink hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was so fabulous, and I got pink hair after that. <laughs> <laughs> hair influence <laughs> it was awesome but you always had your own style and you, you weren't afraid to be who you were and you know that's you know being in a group like that was such a great thing for everybody else to see you know? and that's one thing I, I never mentioned is I grew up taking uh, group piano lessons uh, instead of just private so that was a, an interesting experience too 
well, I have so many parents that say, so when do you think we can go into private lessons? And I would say, why would you want to? Yeah. You know, like, yes, there are, you know, the hardcore teachers that, you know, private, 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 private. And yes, there are many, many valuable things that you can yeah. learn in a private. Yeah, pros and cons. Absolutely. And I do have some students who work best in a private. Then we've tried them in group. And really, they just thrive in a group, in a private situation. Mm -hmm. However... For the most students, I think a, there's just so many things that you can do in a group that you can't do in a private. Like yeah. learning how to perform with others, yeah. learning how in to front walk of out others. in front of yeah. others, right? Because every time you play your, um, when we're getting ready for festival and you have to play me your piece, yeah. you're performing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I've done, you know, senior students working on their grade eight and everybody plays their song for each other. And every week, and then sometimes you'll hear someone go, oh, list B sounds way better than mine yeah. and it will <laughs> inspire the other kids to go home and practice well some of my best memories are like of, of music lessons are of um, working on my RCM grade 8 with like what three or four other people and there's that's like accountability right there because other people oh, are yeah. hearing you not improve if you don't practice absolutely well and that was at an age when that was really important to you yeah right? when you're a teenager for sure yeah. yeah. So like, there is so many advantages, and I I teach my own son in a group. Yeah. You know, I just think it's it's a great thing, and even just learning how to play while there's distractions, while there's other things going yeah. on. Plus, we could learn, we could do ensemble work. Yeah, like duets and trios and all kinds of stuff like that. Right. Yeah. 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 Very good for the ear. Oh yeah. Man, I should teach groups. <laughs> I really love it. I, I should really really love it. So. I get a lot of questions from piano teachers or aspiring piano teachers. And um, do you have any like advice for, you know, say like a young person who wants to be a piano teacher? Yeah. So something you have to remember is if a student doesn't understand, that's on you. It's a big burden and it's a big responsibility, but everybody learns differently. So you have to be able to adapt and be able to not always feel like this is how I teach it, so this is the only way I teach it. Everybody has to learn differently. So if little Timmy, who's eight years old, doesn't learn how to read notes properly when you're teaching him, it's not his fault, it's yours. I have a yeah. little Timmy who is <laughs> 10 years old, and if you heard little Timmy play, you'd your jaw would drop. And he has no desire to read notes right now. Yeah. And so okay. I'm not making him. Well... So there was um, an adjudicator that I had um, who adjudicated me when I was doing my techniques pop exams and we had like a teacher thing that you could do. And he didn't read music. I was like, you're an examiner and you don't <laughs> read music? That is very bizarre. And he looked at me and he said, music is a listening art. Mm -hmm. And I sat there for a minute and I thought, you have a point. He said, when you go to a concert, like, are you watching them, you know, yeah. read their music? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you're listening to it. You're being engaged. And that's the whole point. And it, you don't need to be able to read music to do that. Now, being an accompanist, to me, reading music is a very valuable skill. Yeah. <laughs> I could not do this, have this as a job, as another job, if I didn't know how to read music. So I just, you know, explain, keep explaining to my little Timmy that, you know, that, hey, you know, if you want to do this as a living, you may want to learn how to do this. Yeah. So for the end of the year, I got my senior students, I bought them all a music book. And so I said, so I'm going to buy you a book. Let's go find a book with songs you like. Do you think you'll read this? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, I think I might. Okay. So now he's got something worth reading. Something that he cares about. Right? Yeah. And he, like, I showed him how to follow. Like, it has a tab and, and it has a... Yeah, um, like a PVC. Right. Yeah. And so we just, I showed him how to find the melody line and how to follow that. And here's your chords, because he knows how to do lots of chords and lots of left hand stuff. And he played, we have a rock band program at Long McQuaid. Yes. And he plays in the bands. And so, like, he knows how to play jump. And he knows how to play, like, a, a plethora of songs. And... 
rock songs and his dad is a, a musician in town. So he and could be so, like a session musician. Absolutely. Yeah. And they played, they actually busked together oh, at the uh, Children's uh, Art Festival this year. So does he read music? Not right now, but that he could if he wanted to. And, you know, I figure, you know what, I'll just keep engaging him in what he's doing and then he'll learn it when he's ready. You know, I, did, I think you just like dropped a big gem of wisdom right there. Like, like music is a listening art. It is. And yeah. I forget about that. It's so like such an obvious fact that. Right. Yeah. So just because, and he used to be in a group and the, he would come to class and he couldn't play what everybody else had played because they were playing out of the book and he wasn't interested in playing in the book. So he would come to class and he'd feel terrible. Mm -hmm. And so how is that going to inspire him to play? So, you know, if you want to be a teacher, you have to to do what's right for your student. And so for my student, what was right was taking him out of the group. And what was right for him was to teach in a style and try and engage him that is going to inspire him. Yeah, so like an individualized approach. Absolutely. Instead of a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Absolutely. And that's the biggest thing, right? Everybody is different and has a different style. If you have... I had a student with Down syndrome. I taught him completely different than I taught my other students, right? An adult student, uh, uh, my three- and Mm four-year-olds, right? Everybody learns different. You have students that just want to learn classical, students who just want to learn pop, students who... right? Right? So you just... You give everybody what they need, and, and then you have to learn how to adapt. So we've been having a lot of fun talking and having wonderful <laughs> conversations about piano teaching and stuff like that. We have many more conversations to share with you in the next video. We're going to cut this off before it gets way too long. But thank <laughs> you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you, if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, thank you for joining me, Christine. Thanks Catch you for next time. <laughs>the vals the chopin vals and c sharp minor opus 64 number two is oh, my I, I, absolute I, favorite it's probably my favorite song in the world in the whole world it is all probably songs. my favorite song and it has been since i was a kid hmm. there was a commercial for arthritis and it was like this lady and she was trying to play and she couldn't play it Right, and it was just uh, 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 because her fingers were her arthritis was acting up, and then I don't know if it was like she put Ben Gay on them or whatever it was, and then, just and and then all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> and it was like, whoa, this song is amazing. <laughs>